Hi there and welcome to another Django, Bokeh and HTMX tutorial. Previously we built this bar chart, now we're going to build a line chart for country GDP data. We're going to plot using a line chart the GDP progression for a country from the minimum year in the data to the maximum year which is 2016. So we should see the trajectory of the country's GDP through time and we're going to build this with Django, Bokeh and HTMX. So let's go to VS Code and what I've done here is I've copied the index.html file to another file called line.html. Now the index.html file is what you see when you load this page up here. Um, so we're going to copy this structure very similarly, that's why I'm copying that. But we do need to change a few things in line.html. This is going to be a totally new template. So first of all, I'm changing the div ID. It's not bar chart, we're going to build a line chart in this tutorial. Um, and what we're going to do is remove these HTMX attributes from the select box. And I'm going to change the name of this select box to country because we're going to allow the user to select a country from a drop down list. And later on we'll change the years to the countries using uh, the context that's passed to the template. Finally I want to remove this form and this input element. We can remove that from the template and we can actually remove the HR and the label as well. So if we save that and we can now create the URL for this view. Cross over to urls.py and we'll create a path. This is going to go to line and it's going to load up a view called line. And we'll give that a name of line chart. Now we'll cross over to views.py and we're going to create this um, view now. Go to the bottom here and it's going to be called line. And I'll take the request and it's going to be similar in some ways to the, the view that we've built here, the index view, where it's going to use bokeh to plot out a chart. In this case, it will be a line chart. Now, as we said in the line.html file, we want to get all of the countries, all of the unique countries in our data and we want to be able to loop over them and create an option for each one of them. So what we need to do is in the view we need to get a hold of all of the distinct countries in our data. Now I'm going to stop the server for a second here. Let me pass on this view and I'm going to show you in Django's shell how we can do this. So we're going to load up the shell with python manage.py shell plus. Shell plus is a Django extensions command that you can use to basically auto import a bunch of useful things that you're likely to use in the shell. And what we can do is I'm going to show you how to get the distinct countries in the data set. Now the model that we're using is GDP. And what I want to do is get the unique names of each country that we've got in our data. So gdp.objects, and I'm going to use a function called values list. And that allows you to pass the name of a field or multiple names of fields. In this case, it's name. So if I execute that command, actually it's not name, it's country. That's the name of the country. So we get back a query set that contains that single name field for each instance, each row in the data. We can use a parameter called flat equals true. And what that's going to do is flatten that down because it's a single element tuple. That'll flatten it into a list and we get Afghanistan here um, and all of the countries are actually in this it's truncated as you can see here to get the distinct elements we can chain a dot distinct call to that and that gives us all the distinct countries in our data so that query there and um, this Django ORM query is what we want to use in the view to get all of the distinct countries in the data and we can store that in a variable called countries and with that we are going to set up a context where we will pass countries to the template that we're going to render. The next thing we want to do is we want to actually get what the user has selected as a country from the front end. And what I'm going to do is copy this render call here and we're going to paste that below here and we'll change that to line.html. The context has been passed to that template and because line.html is expecting a template variable called countries, we're going to loop over the countries. So it's going to be for, let's say for C and countries and the option we're going to set to C, the value, and then we can say if the country equals C, and we'll, we'll add another template variable called country, if the country equals C, we'll give this option the selected uh, attribute. And finally, the display should be C, which is the country's name. Now, what I'm going to do is add the country. So what we're going to do is we're going to extract the country from the get request, request.get.get country. And that country field matches what we have in the select box here. So name equals country. And finally, we'll give it a default of, let's say, Germany, in case the user hasn't selected a country. We want the line chart to be for Germany in that case. 
that's just randomly chosen, but you can pick um, any other country that is in the data set. And finally, we'll pass the country to our context. And now we can actually show this line now makes sense. If the country that's in the context matches the one we're looping over, then we're going to make the option selected so that it shows in the box. What I also want to do is go to the nav bar and we've got a link to the index page. I'm going to add another link below that that takes us to the line chart page. So if I start the server now with manage.py run server and we cross over to the front end, we should now see another option in our navbar. And if we click that, we have a drop down list and it contains all of the unique countries in our data set. And that's because we've now created that view. So the next step is we're going to render a line chart based on the country that's selected here. So in order to do that, we need to get all of the database records, the models, that are for that particular country from the minimum date to the maximum date. There's one record for each year in the data for each country. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to views.py and we're going to make another ORM query here and we'll store it in a variable called GDPs. It's going to be gdp.objects and we're going to filter and we're going to say the country is, should be equal to the country that's selected and we get that from the get request. Once we filter, we're going to order the data that we get back for a particular country by the year. So that will give us the data from the smallest year to the most recent year in the data. And that's going to be the source of our line chart data. All of the records for a given country ordered from the first year to the last year. So to build a line chart, we want the x-axis to show the years and we want the y-axis to show the numerical value for the GDP. So we're going to extract those from this query set here. And I'm going to paste this code in here. The country years, we, get, we loop over all of the models for that country, or the GDPs, and we get the year out of that, and we also get the GDP itself from each instance. Now with that, we can set up our column data source, and it's going to be very similar to what we did in the last view. Uh, we'll call it CDS, and we will set that up here and we're going to change the key here from country names to country years instead we're not interested in names because we're fetching a line chart for a given country so we set up the column data source which comes from bokeh and now we're going to create a figure object so we're going to call it fig and it's going to be equal to figure we'll give it a height of 500 and we'll give it a title of and this will be an f string and it's going to be country gdp Remember, we have the name of the country from this get request here. So this will be the title at the top of the line chart. It's going to give the country's name plus GDP. And I'm also going to copy some bokeh styling attributes uh, from the last video. We're going to set the title to be center aligned and the font size sh should be slightly larger. And we use this particular formatter for the Y axis. Now what we want to do to our bokeh figure is we want to render a line chart. So we use the figure.line function to do that. And we're using a data source, so we're going to pass the source equals CDS. And we now pass X data, which is going to be the years, the actual years in the data set. And the Y data is going to be the country GDPs that we've got from this list comprehension up here. Finally, I'll set a bit of styling, the line width, just set that equal to 2. So that gives us our figure. We can now call the components function to get a script and a div back. So the components function, we pass the figure to that and it gives us the JavaScript and the HTML um, to actually render this chart. And I can add these to our context here and that should now be available in the template for us. So in line.html, we are actually including this partial here and the partial uh, contains a rendering of the div and the script. So we can just keep that as it is and it should show the chart. So unless I've missed something, if we go to the front end, we should now see the chart for Germany. So if I refresh this page, we now get a bokeh line chart and it shows you the GDP progression for Germany from 1970 up until 2016. And you can see that the trend goes up very much over time for Germany. There are some dips here and there, but by and large, it is an increasing trend. That's the GDP for Germany. Now we want to give users the ability to change the country. So for example, select Denmark, and we want that to update the chart accordingly. So we're going to go back to VS Code, and we're going to add some HTMX attributes to this select element here. It's going to be a get request we're going to send, so hx get, 
and we'll send this to the line chart URL that we've created and we are going to add the HX target and that's going to be this line chart div up here. It's an ID so we'll use the hash and then line chart. So that means the response we get from this endpoint will be swapped into this div here, into the inner HTML. And one final step, um, we want to make sure that if it's an HTMX request, we render only the partial with the updated chart. So to do that, we will copy this code here from the previous view, and we can move that down here. If it's an HTMX request, we will render just this partial, which takes care of uh, rendering out the div and the script that you get from the components function. So with those simple changes, we should now be able to see this update dynamically. If I refresh the page and we select Denmark, you see that it actually updates and we see the GDP for Denmark. If we select the USA, we get the American GDP, which is actually very steady compared to some other countries. Um, if we go to China for a rather extreme example, you can see that China's GDP is almost exponential actually. It starts off very slowly increasing, but there is a real, a real improvement in that GDP from around about 2000 onwards. So that's quite interesting. You can select other countries such as India and you can see a similar uh, slowly growing GDP that explodes around about 2005. You can actually extend this to do a multi-line chart, so drawing multiple lines for different countries on this. Um, but we're not actually going to do it from the front end, but I'm going to show you how to do it using Django and Bokeh. So if we cross to the views.py file in the back end, our column data source takes in a list for the years and the GDPs. We can actually use a nested list. Um, so basically a list of lists if we want to render multiple lines um, in this line chart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the structure of this, show you how it is done on the back end, show you how it looks on the front end. We're not going to wire up HTMX for this part of it though. Um, so I'm going to paste in some data. We're going to target these three countries here and that's Germany, China and France. And we're going to get these lists here for each one of the countries and we're going to add them to these two container elements here. So basically we're going to create a list of lists where each individual inner list contains the data for that given country. So to do this we'll loop over the countries for country in C, looping over these three countries here. And what we can do is I'm going to, I'm going to bring this line here into this statement here. So we're going to filter the GDP objects in the database by whatever country we're looping over here and we'll get the GDPs for that country. And then what we can do is we can move uh, these two lines here into the for loop where we loop over the GDPs and we get the country years and the GDPs for that given country. And then what we can do is instead of creating a list comprehension, we will just append that to our year data. Year data dot append and then we'll use the list comprehension. And similarly for the country GDPs, we can say GDP data dot append and that will append all the GDPs. So these are the two containers up here. We're appending to each of those at each step in the for loop. And what we're actually appending is a list containing the data for the given country. And then it goes to the next country and gets that country's data and adds that as well. So now we have a couple of lists here that contain more lists within them. And what we do now is we set up the column data source here to take the nested lists. So instead of country years, it's going to be year data. And instead of country GDPs, it's going to be GDP data. And finally, instead of calling the line function, we're going to call another function called multi-line. And this is basically just telling Bokeh that we're rendering multiple lines on this line chart. And because we have multiple X and Y datas, we will say X's and Y's instead of X and Y. That's just required by the multi-line function here. And now if we refresh the front end, we see that we have multiple lines for each of these different countries in our data. This is working well, but we need to differentiate between what these lines are. So there's a couple of things we're going to do to do that, to show which line belongs to which country. We're going to create a legend. And to create a legend, we're going to add some more data to this column data source. So we have a dictionary here, and we're going to split this into multiple lines. Um, another key we're going to add is uh, names, and we're going to set that equal to C. That's the list of countries here. We're going to be able to access each country's name within our column data source. And to the multi-line function, we can add a legend group argument. So again, I'll separate these into multiple lines. And we'll say legend group equals, and it's going to be equal to the names. 
This is the key name in our column data source. And as long as that matches the key in the data source, we should be able to see a legend on the front end. So if I refresh this now, you see we have a legend appearing in the top right. Now, because of this uh, line here, I want the legend to be in the top left instead. So we can actually change the position of the legend. Underneath the call to the multi-line function, we'll say fig.legend.location. And this is a string, it's just top left. And that should move the legend to the top left of the chart. And finally, we're going to change the colors of these lines because we don't have any way to know which one is which at the moment. So we'll add another um, key to our column data source, colors. And we'll set that equal to a list where we're hard coding some colors, red, blue, and green. So we'll save that. And we can now say uh, within our call to multi-line, we can say line color equals colors. And that needs to be a string because it's referencing uh, the name of a key in our column data source. So if we now save that and refresh, we should see we get different colors. Now we can clearly see that China is the blue line that grows very fast. And France and Germany have very similar uh, GDP trajectories. We can see that now that we have a color and a legend on this chart. So that's everything for this video. We've seen how to do line charts and now multi line charts using Django and Bokeh. And we've seen how we can change the country that's being shown if it's a single line chart using a drop down box and HTMX. So thank you for watching. Check out the blog post if you want more information on this topic. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.